In this short video I would like to introduce you to the salvage tug Zifolki, because this is a special museum ship, and so I thought a short documentary about this ship would not be the worst, even if I am not a professional YouTuber or even shipping expert. The tug Zifolki, that translates as Sea Falcon, was built in 1924 at the Tecklenburg shipyard. This ship is 58 meter long, 9 meter wide, and has a maximum draft of 4 meter. The displacement is 600 tons. As propulsion it has the diesel engines, with 6 cylinders each, at 1,600 horsepower, with 300 revolutions per minute. The average crew on board was 20 men. The ship was used as a salvage tug on the high seas to tow away damaged ships. In the 1920s, the tug salvaged many ships at Scopa Flow, which were sank there by the German Navy after the First World War. When the Z Falki was towing the wreck of the former German battle cruiser SMS Mulalki, they nearly crashed into the fifth, a fourth bridge in Scotland, thanks to quick thinking of the captain. A bad accident was prevented, and the tug pulled away from the bridge in 1940. Instead of old engines, from 1924, the ship got the new engines, you can see, until today, sunk at the end of the war, then raised and repaired. The ship was used until 1970 as a salvage tug. It often waited for many days in one position, and then was quickly deployed to tow away in stricken vessel. Perhaps this is the reason why in 1924 it was decided to install diesel engines, a relatively new technology at that time. With the oil-fired preheating water boiler on board, the engines were always preheated and quick to start. This would not have been possible with the average steam engines still used at that time. Nevertheless, the ship somehow still looks very much like a steamship, with its thick funnel and the two masts. But now let's go on board and look around in the stern, the most important part of a tugboat. There we see big bollards and also a big towing winch, with huge drums and a winch in the middle. The towing winch was electrically driven. A little further forward, we see the most important component of the ship, the hook. Now up to the bridge of the ship, we see the chart room with the large table on which the nautical charts were spread. Today, unfortunately, all emptied. The bridge itself is very small. Hardly three men find place here. An ancient radar unit can be seen. Probably one of the oldest devices. Then we see the steering wheel and of course the engine telegraph. On the back wall, there is an echo sounder and further back, there are two tachometers, which showed the captain if his orders to the engine were correctly implemented.
On the lower deck is the captain's quarters and the radio station, which is still operated by amateurs. Unfortunately, it is rarely visited. At the height of the main deck is the crew mess and also the galley. Everything is functional and spartan. There is no comfort on this working ship. Here a short view to the stern of the ship, out of the galley. Let's now enter the engine room. Even today, 50 years after shutdown, there is this typical smell of diesel and lubricating oil. I am absolutely no expert concerning diesel engines, but I want to show and explain a few little things. In the front part of the engine room are some auxiliary diesels, which drove generators. Here an example, a diesel from MAN Nuremberg from 1924 with 112 horsepower. This drove an air compressor and a generator on a shaft. It is a pity that on this ship, at least one of the auxiliary diesels is not made operational again for demonstration purposes, but there is a lack of time and money. Next to it, the big switchboard with the bakelite switches. You can see the volt and ammeter, the lamps for synchronization and more. Next to the switchboard, the small steam boiler of the heater to keep the engines always at operating temperature. Here you can see the driving position with the telegraphs and the various displays for compressed air, temperature and more. Here with the small lever, the valves of the diesel engine were adjusted from starting with compressed air to operation and stopping of the machine. Also you see the big telltales from the engine telegraphs, where the captain ordered the commands down below, like full ahead, half ahead and reverse and so on. On the side of the machine well to see the large compressed air bottles these have almost similarity with torpedoes the whole engine room is filled with pipes gauges pumps fans and more all silent and no one there to explain it to you one deck higher under the skylight the cylinder heads with the rocker arms of the valves behind them the big exhaust pipes to the smokestack here at the side one of the pistons with these huge dimensions. Once you have climbed down the ladder again, you are standing in front of the ship's bulkhead, which can be closed from deck via a gear mechanism in an emergency to protect the engine room from water ingress. Interesting to see something like that. And if you turn around, you have this view. If you are the last visitor in the evening, 
On this almost hundred-year-old ship, silence. That was the visit on this ship. Nice that this tugboat was preserved. I rode on a small steam tug from 1910 for a few years in my spare time. But seeing this big tug is something else. She's only 14 years younger than the small steam tug I know. But the engine room is a whole other universe. Let's hope that the ship will be preserved for a long time. It would be a dream that it goes again. But a moving museum ship costs money and work, and to find a crew is very difficult. That's it, from me. I hope this short video liked. Please share, like if you like it.